Hello everyone and welcome to a, a very nice game from round one of the Jarba Masters Chess Festival 2024. Uh, I understand it's also called uh, Jarbach. It's um, it's an island in Tunisia and it's the biggest one in North Africa, uh, or or so they say. And it's a very nice game between Hans Smoke and Iman and uh, Arian Tari. Hans trying to claw his way back uh, uh, into the uh, 2700, and Tari as usual uh, a very very strong player. Now sorry about no videos for the past two days. I actually played um, some chess myself. I played. Uh, well, it's sort of a mini tournament for my uh, for my chess club where we didn't do all that great as a team, but I, I did okay. I went undefeated uh, uh, five games. So if you if if you want, I can even show some of them. Uh, you know, do do mention in the comments. But now let's uh, focus on real chess. Uh, it's it's a really nice game. Uh, so let's check it out. Also, if you, if you guys uh, like Hans, you can follow his journey on becoming world champion. He's documenting it uh, every day available on his channel uh, and he's also of course uh, analyzing all of the games that he plays uh, plus you know he um, uh, mentions w w what uh, you could do to improve and uh a bit of a different analysis than what you would see here, obviously, on a much higher level. Uh, I did not watch it. I did not want to spoil my brilliant analysis. So, uh, you know, uh, but, but, you know, do, do check it out. So uh, let's check out the game. Hans uh, with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4. We have pawn to d5 by Arian. Uh, knight to f3, knight, sorry, knight to f3, knight to f6, and now pawn to g3. Now this is um, what I hated the most when I play with the black pieces. If I if I go for something like knight to f6 and d5, uh, as uh, I really hate playing against the, the, the bishop to g2 setup. So bishop to f5. Uh, and now knight to h4, going after the bishop right away, bishop to e4 attacking the rook, f3, bishop to g7, and now uh, there are some games where knight captures on g6 and bishop to g2 were played, but here Hans just goes pawn to c4, and it is now uh, as of move 6 that we have a completely new game. Uh, and here uh, Tari uh, actually spent quite a lot of time, he spent 23 minutes on his next move, and he decided to go pawn to c5, which of course makes sense, he attacks the center, uh, Hans captured on g6, h captures, giving Tari the semi-open h file for his rook, c captures on d5, and now as usual in these lines uh, you can capture with the queen, with the knight, or you can ignore that and capture on d4 with the pawn, which is what Arian does, c captures on d4, e4 now, uh, and now d captures on e3 al passant. So why did Hans do this? Well, to gain rapid development, knight to c3. And the, the pawn is now nicely defended, and the question is how should... Um, well, how should Arian uh, continue? It's a very weird position where the Black King is still stuck in the center. It's very unclear how you can actually develop. You can't. You, you could go for something like pawn to e5, but even by doing this, let's say bishop captures on e3, uh, it's still not uh, easy to develop. Bishop, for example, bishop to d6, queen to d3, and you can castle here, but then white castles queen side, and uh, then the rook marches forward, and it's going to be very very hard for Black to play this. Uh, so instead, uh, Tari played rook to h5, which makes sense. He doesn't want to play something like queen to b6 to uh, defend the e3 pawn. He actually wants to capture on d5. But there is something uh, something uh, really wrong with this rook to h5 move. And uh, I'm going to ask you, even though it's only move 10, to pause the video and try to punish this um, uh, idea by Tari while I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, uh, uh, well, successfully punishing uh, opening uh, uh, mistakes. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to b5 with check. Now, it's a pretty standard move. I'm pretty sure it's the first one you thought of, uh, but you were probably wondering, okay, but what is so special about bishop to b5? Okay, you're not going to play knight f to d7. Then you're just blocking this knight, and uh, as this knight cannot de be developed to c6, this knight should be developed to d7. So it does make sense to play it right away. Knight to d7 blocks check, develops a piece, and now pawn to g4. This is the idea, making the rook move uh, sort of a big waste of time. Uh, and okay, of course, Tari doesn't want to go back, he will go uh, to h3. Now, bishop back to f1, forcing the rook back to the starting square. And while well, you could go to h4, uh, it's not, I mean, it's not really doing all that much on h4. So Tari says, all right, let's just bring it back, rook to h8. Bishop captures on e3, and now we have pawn to g5. But you can see that it's still incredibly difficult to develop this king. It's stuck in the center of the board without all that much to do. So pawn to g5, trying to give up some material uh, to, uh, to, to get the b6 square for the black queen. But Hans ignores, oh no, Hans doesn't ignore it, he actually captures it. Bishop captures on g5, uh, but Tari does not go for queen to b6, which uh, 
uh, objectively is still winning for Hans, uh, but it's uh, uh, to, to, to win this by force, you really have to be an engine. Uh, because in the game, pawn to g6 was played, now also looking at ideas like bishop to g7 or maybe even bishop to h6, uh, but now pawn to d6 by Hans. Uh, there are other moves that you could play here, but d6 is a perfectly fine idea, uh, and that's why uh, Hans plays it. Now, what can you do here? Obviously, you can capture, you could advance the pawn. Is any of this good? Let's say you just uh, ignore it, of course. Uh, if, if you capture the pawn, then bishop to b5. And again, it's very, very hard to develop. If bishop to e7, queen to d4 lands. And... Um, uh, everything is completely uh, paralyzed. Like, you, you can't castle as you've already moved the rook. And if you try something else, uh, it's very hard. You could unpin maybe with king to f8, but then just bishop captures uh, on d7, and the problem uh, is still in the pin on the knight. There's no way to um, actually play anything here. So you can't play something like captures on d6. Can you play something like e6? Maybe this is... Um, a better way to go. Still bishop to b5 and very very difficult uh, the, the queen cannot come to, to, to d4, the queen can come to a4 to put more pressure. Uh, you can play it but again objectively it is lost. So here uh, instead queen to b6 was played. He was trying to play this uh, the entire game so he goes for it now and this is uh, Hans's uh, basically first big think of the game. He thought about the position for some 20 minutes I think maybe less than 20, 19 uh, and he played rook to c1 but uh, I allowed the engine to crunch the numbers here just uh, you know show us how you should play this the engine just says no you play queen to d2 and then you castle uh, but queen to d2 is such an inhuman move okay you, you defend b2 but you know that he wants to capture on d6 with the queen and you're just gonna have to recapture with the queen so it's very odd playing queen to d2 and then queen captures on uh, d6 your, your idea is that if he wants to capture on d6 you want to capture from d1 on d6 uh, without wasting time but no the engine says that we if uh, queens get traded off and you castle here, that white is just objectively winning. Even though it's uh, equal material, but black has three pawn islands, white has two pawn islands, and also white has the bishop pair in an open game. So, uh, you know, the, the engine wins this one. Uh, but okay, uh, the, uh, the, these are humans playing, so rook to c1 was played, now inviting Tari to capture on b2, but then, okay, rook b1 attacks, um, and not right away, of course, if queen captures, uh, first you will play bishop back to d2, defend the knight, and now rook to b1, you're gonna go after the b7 pawn, and it's very hard to uh, avoid this, you could go for something uh, like queen back to b6, but that's a lot of time wasted for, for, for the capture of one pawn. So instead, after rook c1, pawn to a6 was played, Tari, of course, knows that bishop to b5 is a huge problem uh, and thus he stops it now queen to d2 and now pawn to e6 so is there a way to take advantage of this well rook to d1 now the d6 pawn is nicely defended and you don't have to worry about bishop to e7 or bishop captures on d6 so bishop to g7 nicely developing and now bishop back to e3 chasing away the black queen queen to a5 and now bishop to e2 uh, asking uh, Tari, do, uh, are you ready to uh, move the king to the uh, to the king side? You still cannot castle, but you could uh, maybe play king to a fate uh, and get your king a little bit to safety. It's not it's not much. Uh, so instead, knight to e5 was played. Okay, it's a very nice uh, knight. The the idea is to bring this knight over to d7 and sort of uh, free up your bishop a little bit while activating your knight. King to f1. Now, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, if the knight moves anywhere. You don't have to worry about queen trade coming with check. Plus, also, your king is coming to g2. You want to castle artificially. We have knight f to d7. Now comes king to g2 and rook to c8. Nicely developing, Tari finding uh, useful moves, rook back to c1, and now queen back to d8. Tari says, all right, I have a pa very passive position, but, uh, you know, if you want to win, you're going to have to do something. So knight to e4, again, very unpleasant, just bringing the knight closer to the black king, knight to c6, and now we have pawn to h4. And here, uh, both players were uh, under five minutes on the clock. Well, uh, after next move was played, next move, uh, king to f8 was played. But h4 is such a beautiful move because rook captures on h4 is not possible. Even though it looks like you can capture it, if you capture it, look at this, captures, 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 and now rook to h1 attacks the queen, and once the queen goes back, now you have rook h7, and black's position is just uh, dreadful. It's it's hard to even find the word how bad the position is. You can't even find a move here for black. To give you an example, let's say you play bishop b5. Your, your bishop is attacked. You have to play something. Let's say you play bishop b5, f4 traps the bishop. 
Okay, bishop f6, g5 now traps the bishop. So you can do that. If you if after rook to h7 you want to play something else, uh, you could play king to f8. But then comes bishop to h6, and again you resign. There's uh, no move here. Bishop captures is the threat. Uh, and of course, if you capture, then first a nice rook h8 to check. The king cannot go to e7. You have to go to g7. And then queen captures an h6 will be checkmate. So the h4 pawn is definitely off limits. Uh, Tari goes uh, king to f8. And now Hans throws in pawn to b4. There are other moves you could play. You could play a4. You could play g5. You could play pretty much anything. Uh, but uh, every position is more winning if you throw in a nice b4. We have knight to f6, offering a trade of knights. Uh, and while knight captures an f6 is still fine for Hans, Hans does does not want to uh, alleviate the pain, uh, he goes knight to c5. And this is just a, a hard move to face. Um, wh whatever you think about playing here, that just doesn't work. Knight captures on b7 obviously is coming, uh, but there's no way to stop it. Even if you defend it with something like rook b8, still knight captures on b7, followed by rook captures on c6. The pawn cannot be defended. So Tari goes knight to d5, and now knight captures on b7, attacks the queen, queen to d7, and just bishop captures on a6. And uh, again, we could analyze some lines here just to show you how hopeless the position is. Let's say you play, uh, you, you could capture on b4. Okay, two of your knights are attacking the pawn. Let's say you capture with the d knight. Knight d captures on b4. Then comes knight the c5 attacks the queen and once the queen moves uh, pretty much anything uh, wins here you could go bishop g5 you attack the queen uh, and there's uh, well not, nothing more to be done here if you go to e8 then pawn to d7 is just winning uh, if you go to let's say b6 then knight to d7 with check picks up the queen if you go to what else can you play if you go queen to a5 uh, it's just a free rook there's uh no, no counterplay here. So instead, knight c captures on b4 was played with the idea of trading off rooks, but uh, it's still winning for Hans. Rook captures on c8, queen captures, and now rook back to c1, attacking the black queen, queen to d7. And now there are good moves here, but there is one that uh, just forces resignation. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the simplest way to win this uh, uh, game for Hans uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding this brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook to C7. This is what Hans played, and now there really isn't uh, uh, much you can do. Again, you don't have to take the Rook, but uh, you, you really should. Even if you don't, let's say, play King, uh, Queen to 8 then D7 again uh, is winning. So he did capture on C7, and now comes not, of course, captures, but Knight to C5. Captures is still winning. Knight to c5 is just uh, a, a lot uh, a lot better. Queen to d8, now bishop to g5. And he was in this position on move 35 that Ariantari resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is your queen is hanging, and once you block with f6, then uh, look at this. This is now a problem, but you don't even have to go for that. You could go for uh, d captures on c7. And the queens even get traded off with check, bishop captures, and now king to f7. You sort of stop the, the queening, uh, but just... Uh, uh, bishop captures on b4 and there's no way to do anything here you're just going to bring your queen into the game once the rook captures you're just going to be up uh, a full bishop and the knight so f6 uh, does not work here and other than that you really have no squares for the queen like queen t8 you can again advance the pawn if you go all the way to let's say b8 then knight to d7 check again wins the queen if you go to a8 uh, then just d captures on c7 doesn't matter you know you, you have nothing here if knight captures on a6 then queen to d8 with check and if queen captures again uh, c captures on d8 with a promotion to a queen uh, results in checkmate uh, so yeah, brilliant stuff by Hans, very nicely done in round one. Also, Vasily Vanchuk is playing in this tournament, so I'm looking very, I'm very much looking forward to uh, showing a couple, a couple of his games. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure as usual, uh, he and and Hans will, will play a, a really wild one. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, uh, I don't know if uh, a lot has happened these past uh, few, uh, two days as I haven't been uh, following what's been going on. So if you have a game that uh, has been played and it's a nice one to show to everyone, use hashtag suggestion and I will very happily go over it. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, once again, very nicely done by Hans. Uh, I would like to thank David Gasparian, Yun Young, uh, Jeffrey Manser, uh, Kevin Hawkins and Daniel Heist for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my 
my previous videos. So thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but also on everything else that happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.